And the next speaker is uh, Joey Faulkner. Let's give him a, a warm round of applause. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, yeah, I'm Joey. I, I, I am a, uh, I think my title is AI researcher at RASA. And um, basically, uh, I'm here to tell you about uh, uh, our open source libraries that we have to make, to, to help you make chatbots. Um, but first off, you're probably wondering, what is a chatbot? So let's start there. So um, at their heart, all, all a chatbot does is it turns text into actions. So for example, you could have, a, the simplest idea of a chatbot could be, you say hello to it and it says hello back. So that could be like a text response as an action. Or you could have a chatbot where you want some information out of it. So you say, oh, um, uh, <laughs> What, what, what is the Rotten Tomatoes review of The Dark Knight or something? And it would find that information and then present it to you as text or something like that. Or you could have a database update. So you could say, uh, oh, chatbot, I've just moved house. Can you please tell my bank that I've moved house? And it would update its own database and something like that. But basically, all you're doing with the chatbot is you are um, interacting with a service. And the reason why people are talking about chatbots now is, is because we finally are getting to a point where our technology is good enough to make chatbots that really ha have good conversations, really understand what you're doing. And the, the reason why we think it's going to be such a revolution is that if you think about user experience, if, if somebody is interacting with your product and they go onto your website, they have to try and work out what your web designer thought that they would think when they come onto, the, uh, onto your website, which isn't exact. Uh, but if instead of saying, okay, you don't have to go to this page on the website or look through the F FAQ or anything like that, you just say to your chatbot, this is exactly what I want in, in uh, whatever language you choose. That's a much more natural way of interacting with a product, essentially. Um, so basically, uh, the, 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 way, the way it's currently split at the moment is there's two different uh, parts from going from text to actions. So there's the NLU, which is natural language understanding, which goes from text to something known as intents and entities, which I'll explain later. And uh, DM, which is dialogue management, which takes the intent, the entities, and the context of the conversation and turns them into the actions. And that's how you get from text to actions. Um, right, so I'm going to start off with, uh, I'm going to have an example to explain what I just said because it didn't make any sense. So uh, say we have a weather forecasting bot and, and a user asks it, what's the weather like in Karlsruhe tomorrow? Um, what the NLU will do is it'll kick in and take this text and then it'll produce a JSON. Um, and then it, it, produce, it produces what we call intents and entities. The intent meaning, what did this message try to convey to me? What, what, what does the user want? So in this case, this person is requesting the weather. But then the entities are the specifications about what that intent is. So for example, they specify that they want the location of Karlsruhe. That's one of the ent entities. And then also that they wanted the uh, uh, tomorrow. So that's the date. So we can take the, these entities and this intent and pass it to the dialogue manager. And then with the dialogue manager, we go from the intent and the entities to the actions. So here we have the user with the intent, with a rather request, says calls run and, and the date tomorrow. Uh, the bot then knows it has to query the weather API and then inform the user of the weather like that. And uh, so then the, the, uh, turn the results of that API into text uh, through language generation. Um, so the bot will respond, it's going to be sunny. Uh, which I didn't actually check, so it might be sunny, but don't, don't take this as fact. Uh, anyway, so uh, now I want to talk about what we do and how we're, gonna, we're trying to make it possible for people to do this in an open source uh, framework. So um, basically, the, the frameworks that exist at the moment outside of RASA are API-based. So you'll send a query to uh, uh, Google or, um, or IBM or Microsoft with your user, uh, the user's data, and all they'll do is send back exactly what they think is the truth of the intents and the entities and stuff like that, but you'll never know actually what's going on behind it. Um, so, and we think this, is, this kind of sucks because it means that you can never uh, debug it. You, like, if you're a data scientist or a machine learning person, you don't know why it's gone wrong and, and how confident they are, and, and so we don't really like that, and we think that you should have true control over the entire process. So first off, uh, we released our NLU library about uh, just under a year ago, and we have 45 contributors to that, um, uh, which is another great part about being open source, that the community works with us and, um, and makes pull requests and stuff like that, which is awesome. And then 
just this month we released Razacore, which is our dialog manager, um, and there's only four contributors. But if you want to be one, then we'll send you a, a, a t-shirt, so uh, you should get on that. Um, but all in all, in the past year since we released RASA NLU, over 20,000 developers have been using uh, RASA, which is awesome. And we have a very active gitter of people who, who are willing to help if you fancy building a chatbot. So now I'm going to go through RASA NLU and RASA Core, uh, explaining what they do. I'm going to focus a bit more on RASA Core just because it's newer, but also because we have we've changed the way that we're trying a completely different approach to doing dialog management and I think it's quite an interesting thing to talk about. So first, RAS NLU. Uh, when we were designing it, we uh, thought that a, a good philosophy to have is that we should, we should get great results on your data set no matter if you have 30 examples or 3 million examples per intent. Um, so the way we did this, uh, firstly our intent classifications, we use uh, pre-trained word vectors, which I, so I, this is funny, I, I thought that the talk before me was going to be about word vectors, so I was going to be like, luckily you've been explained word vectors by the previous talk, so it doesn't matter, but unfortunately that didn't happen. Um, so here's the briefest and least complete uh, word vector explanation that you'll ever get. Basically, um, uh, word vectors are mappings from individual words into a vector space, typically of about a few hundred elements. And what, what, the, what, um, what these vectors mean are that two words that are similar, such as big and large, will be close to each other in this vector space. So uh, you learn this through unsupervised method, methods, such as just reading through Wikipedia or something like this. And, um, but then you just keep those vectors and use them for different tasks. So, we, we use these, these word vectors and averaging these word vectors of a sentence as f features for intent classification. So we'll just then run it through like a support vector classifier or something like that. Um, and this is cool firstly because we don't have to relearn every, uh, the, the English language every time we make a new bot because it still remembers what these words mean in relation to one another, but also that we can use the same method for any language with word vectors. Um, subject to a pull request. So at the moment we have English, German, and Spanish, but if you speak any other languages that you think would be would work with RASA, we'd, we'd love you to get involved and submit a pull request. Um, we also have extra features to deal with typos and compound words, which are especially important in German, uh, which was my first task, <laughs> because it was just that there are these massive compound, I don't speak German, but there are these massive compound words with, um, uh, which are very important key words, but they'll never have co converged word vectors because uh, like, they'll, they'll be used only a few times and, in the training corpus and they'll never actually get good. So basically we automatically generate engrams from within uh, compound words that haven't been recognized and then you add them as extra features on the intent classification and it works very well. Um, so th this is our intent classification and then we also have entity recognition. Um, so for standard stuff like date, location, and names, we have pre-trained models that uh, can recognize these automatically out of the box. But, it, but in a lot of cases, you'll want to uh, find entities which aren't standard. So maybe you'd want movie titles or something like this. Um, and we use a technique known as conditional random fields, which make a sort of probabilistic model of what your sentence should look like um, and how wo words with certain properties should transition to one another. And then with the most probable... It, 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 you don't need to know any of this, but <laughs> crucially, uh, you can just pull it out of the box and use it. But, but with, with, we, we return the most probable entities, uh, and it works really well. Like, of order 30 to 50 examples, we're already getting very good entity uh, recognition, but with the more data, it gets even better. Um, so I just wanted to uh, point out this paper um, because it's something we're really proud of. Uh, a, somebody from the uh, uh, University of Munich took four services, one of whom being RASA and, and one by Microsoft, IBM and Google, all, all three of which are paid services and ours obviously being open source, something you can just take, take and clone onto your uh, computer and we can never take it from you. Um, it, it, they, they compared on three different tasks how, how well we did uh, at returning the correct intents and entities and we came second, which we were really happy about. So. Uh, on the chatbot task, we drew we drew first for uh, with with uh, Microsoft, but uh, yeah, so we did really well on that, and we were really excited, and hopefully we'll be first within a short period of time. Um, yeah, so so next, uh, I just I also wanted to talk about this awesome thing that somebody's made. So since we open source, we've developed this community of people wanting to add new things to Rasa and Rasa and you in particular. So somebody has made a. Um, 
because as I showed you, the JSON format is normally how you uh, put in training data, but somebody was like, this is actually a really rubbish way of doing it. And uh, at the time that this was made, nobody at Rasa was very good with JavaScript. So this person uh, said, okay, you know what I'm, I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a, um, a web interface where you can add intents, you can label your entities, and then it'll export it directly as a Rasa NLU format. So now this is open source as well, so you can just clone this and use this for yourself. and. Uh, make your training data really easily. Um, so that's really exciting and part of this amazing community we're, we're, try, we're trying to build and already exists. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, now, now I wanna talk about RASA core and more broadly to start with dialogue systems. So the first thing that you would do if you, if you made a dialogue system, and I know this because before I worked with RASA, this is what I thought to do, would be something known as a state machine which looks like a lot, I noticed in the uh, Neutrino talk, it looks a lot like the different flavors of Neutrinos, but there's only, uh, there's no relation whatsoever. Um, but uh, essentially, uh, what it is is you, you, when you talk to a chatbot, you'll start off in an, an initial state, which is like a hello state. So you'll say hello, the bot will say hello back, and you're in that state. But then, uh, and then the user will say, I wanna open a savings account, so you'll move from the initial state to the savings state in which case you'll do a lot of actions which correspond to the saving state. Um, this, uh, uh, so, so, then, so then you go, go through all the motions of the saving state and then you're like, oh, now I wanna talk about mortgages, so you move to the mortgage state. And when you first think about this, think about chatbots, you're like, makes perfect sense. I, I'm gonna build states that people will want to use and then uh, I won't have to deal with anything more complicated than this because people realize that this is a great bot and this is the way it does things. But that works perfectly until anybody except you uses it. Because they'll ask something which, which isn't standard and doesn't fit into any of the states. You'll be like, ah, okay, yeah, another, somebody could think that. So I'm gonna make another state. And so you, make, you add another state, but then you have to add transitions to all of the states that exist, which if you've got four, that's fine. But once you get to 20, 25, 30 different actions that you wanna do, then this is not a great way of doing chatbots, essentially. So we, we looked at the state machine and we uh, identified several important limitations. Um, but first of all, w w one of the most worrying things about a state machine is that it has no context without you hard coding it. So if you go from the initial state to the saving state, then you'll immediately forget that you were in the initial state before without an if else statement. Um, so, but you say, okay, well, I could include if else statements on each of these states, but then you'll have to do that for each of the n, uh, each of the n states, for about each of the other n states. So that's n squared amounts of if else statements that you'll end up having to write, which is like not good for your fingers or whatever, and it kind of sucks. Um, and that's how it scales poorly. So, so if you want to include context, you, 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 your like the amount of work that you end up having to do is it's a it's poor scaling. Um, and also, it's just not how conversations work. Like, if, if you came and talked to me after this talk, uh, after the talk, and we were talking about something, and you said, oh yeah, let's not talk about sports. And then I'll be like, okay, sports mode. So, and then I'll just start reeling off some facts about sports. It's just, it, it, it doesn't feel right, and it's not, it, it doesn't feel like the, the, way, the way people talk. So, in a, so we were looking at an improved model, and what it would be would be one that was less rigid in structure, like not so, uh, well, state, stateful, um, simpler to create and maintain and improve, uh, and th that it would include context as a matter of course, and that it would be an architecture which was complex enough to produce real conversations which are messy and horrible, uh, and I know that because I've worked with them. Um, so, we may, so our improved model is called Rasa Core. Uh, um, so what we do is we use, uh, we, were the, we were the one, we we're some of the ones that they uh, warned you about because we're using deep learning. Um, but uh, we, use RASA, uh, we use an LSTM, which is a recursive neural network to scan over everything that's happened in the conversation so far. So from hello to whatever, whatever part of the conversation you're in, it'll pass through intents to uh, to, uh, to the input, which will go into the, the center of this cell and then uh, pr predict an action. But then after it predicts an action, it will also pass through some, uh, a, a hidden state from within the cell to the next cell. So uh, in a sense, what, what, the, what the cells are doing is uh, creating their own states, but they're not, they're, not, they're not discrete states. They're a continuous state of the bot is now thinking, okay, we're having quite a sporty conversation now, so these, these, these sporty actions seem a bit more likely, or we're, having, we're talking about mortgages now, so these mortgages ones are a bit more likely, or I don't really know what we're talking about, so all of them are equally likely, and these are all added in as sort of 
Um, th but, but crucially, you're not involved in any of this. You, you never say to the bot, this is how conversations go. It simply learns by talking. Um, and yeah, so this is the motivation. You don't have to say that this is an explicit state. Um, the network automatically includes context because it is scanning over everything you, talk, you said to the bot. And um, if you want to extend the bot, uh, th th all you have to do is add more training data, more examples of conversations where you're including a new intent or including a new action or something like this. Um, and then retrain it, which doesn't take forever. Um, so we, we created this and we thought, okay, this is cool. Um, we're, we're happy with it. This is a great way of, of making bots. But we have to, annoying thing we have to do is we have to go by hand and make all of this training data where we're like, greet, greet, goodbye, goodbye, all this nonsense. So uh, what we thought is actually, because we've moved to the, into a, uh, using a neural network, we can actually do online learning. And what online learning is, is learning on the go. Like, uh, you're given a new example, you try and predict it. If you're wrong, you're told you're wrong and you try something new. So basically what that means for our case is that you teach a bot simply by speaking to it. It tells you what, what, the, what it thinks is the right thing to do. And then you say, actually, no, that's wrong. Do something else. And then it learns to do that. And the next time you come around to the same thing, it should be better. So I've got an example of how that works. Um, so this, this, is a, this is a bot. Um, uh, made to sort of like retrieve Wikipedia pages and talk about Wikipedia pages with people. Uh, and it's, yeah, so I, I'm just going to show you what online learning would look like in this case. So we've just finished training on like our seed training data, which is like not that much, and we just say hello to it. So this is what, what you'll end up getting is this user interface. And I, I stress again, this is something that you can pip install and you have all of this to hand, so uh, we don't expect any money from you. We just want you to use it. Um, so the uh, it sh shows you the chat history. It says the bot's done nothing, and the user said hello to you. And then the NLU is is tied in, and which is something that you also have to train, where you, uh, the user says hello, and the NLU says right hello. That looks a lot like a greet. And then this is a bit more complicated, and something I haven't mentioned before. So that, so uh, bots have. Uh, have sort of like data containers that are known as slots. So if you, um, so, so for example, there's a, the first slot here is an API success slot. So if we've just queried the Wikipedia API, we'll say it's been successful, it hasn't been successful, and, I'll, and that'll be stored in the bot. Then the values of these slots are then used as features into the neural network. So, for example, if you query Wikipedia and it was successful, you can do something different to if you query Wikipedia and it's failed. Um, so, uh, which is which is cool. Um, so, so then then we're given this option of the bot saying, "Okay, now I want to greet. Is this right?" And you can say, "Yes, you should greet." You could say, "No, it's uh, the, like the, the intent of the NLU was right, but the action was wrong." Or you just say the intent is wrong, correct the intent, and then send it back to the NLU. Um, but in this case, we know that it's right, so we're, we're going to say one, yes, OK. And then what wants to suggest links, it should do that. And then it wants to listen. And so now we're saying, tell me about Karlsruhe, OK, yeah, if I can spell right. And uh, at this point, uh, the, bot, uh, the, the, the intent now has an entity as well, which is Karlsruhe, which is the topic. And the bot wants to store that as an interest. So we'll say yes, because you should. And now we can see the, uh, the, in the interest section, there is Karlsruhe. So it's now being stored as a slot. So we've gone from having no, no, uh, nothing in the interest slot into something within the interest slot, which is now passed as a feature into the next bit of the uh, uh, neural network. So uh, j just because of the way that this is constructed, we have difference of interests and pages. And the bot has recognized that there's no page yet, so there's nothing it can do with the interest besides look at the page. Um, so we'll say, yeah, put the interest on the page. Oh, it's gone back a bit. It shouldn't go back. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, we say, oh, yeah, but turn the interest into the page. And then it should query the API. So it says, one sec, I'll just check Wikipedia. And um, so we wait for ages because it takes a while. Um, that, that warning, I promise you, is from my implementation of the Wikipedia API and not from Rassacor, so don't worry about, about that. Um, and so now it's done something wrong. It, it's queried the API and it has successfully got it, API success being true. Um, but now it just wants to listen, but it shouldn't do that. So we say, no, no, the action's wrong. And what we're, get, what we're given is a list of all the possible actions that the bot can do. And to the side, 
we're given the probability, uh, what, that, what the bot thinks those probabilities should be. So there are, there are a bunch of these, but the, 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 one, the one that we, we want, to, want to do is uh, to read the summary of the bot, uh, of, the, of the Wikipedia page. So we, we say four. And, and at the point we say, we say four, uh, the first thing it does is it then goes into the neural network and trains the neural network. So it's, it shows it this example and some of the old examples and, and uh, changes the network, the weights of the network. Uh, and, and what this means is that the next time you come around to this, even within the same training se session, you will get uh, a, a better bot, which does better, essentially. Um, so now it does that. And it, it'll now read as the summary about, saying that this is the second largest city in the state of Baden-Württemberg. Did anybody know that? Um, and then the bot now d has no idea what to do because it's a new place. And it says stores interest, which it shouldn't do. It should be suggesting sections. So the bot suggests the sections. And it trains it to do that. And now uh, the bot's like, OK, should I listen? And then at the point that we pass the listen, listen as an action, uh, the, the user, which is also you, can then uh, talk to it again. So this is sort of the way that we, we, we train our, our network and we construct training data. Because just through having this conversation and playing both, both sides of the conversation. Um, so, and this is cool for, for two ways. So firstly, you could, you, if, if you wanted to just sit down for a mammoth se session and say, right, what are the, what's every single possible way that I could talk to this bot? You would, um, uh, sorry, what's every single possible way I talk to this bot? You could just sit down for a few hours and train it from scratch and then have a trained model at the end. But nobody really works like that. So instead of doing that, what you can do is, at this point, you can press zero. And what it'll do is ex export all of the conversations that you've had up until this point in this training se this session as, as uh, what we call stories format, which are uh, sort of like uh, text uh, recollections of intents, entities, and actions, which are then passed by, the, by Rassacore to um, to, uh, and then set as training data, which you can then learn off. So you, every conversation you've had here is then passed at, in, as training data for the next time you train, essentially. So it'll be much better this time. And that's how we produce training data. Um, yeah, so, so that's kind of how, we, how it works. Um, so I just wanted to show you that it does work, and this is what you'd be doing if you're making a chatbot. But now I'm going to say, now you're like, ah, oh, well, how, how would I go about making this chatbot? So it's actually incredibly simple to get started. Um, all you need is a domain, uh, which is just a YAML file that looks like this. Uh, all, I didn't know what a YAML file was when I, before I started working at Rasa. All it is is just a, 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 a structured uh, uh, file uh, list of things. You can even copy one of ours and just change the words in it. Um, and, it and it lists all the possible actions, slots, and intents and entities that the bot can use. The actions, they are like this. It's just sort of like a class, but, but mo most importantly, a Python function um, where you can interact with any API you'd like. Uh, yep, that's fine. Um, and uh, pass messages to the, to the, uh, to the user and uh, change the slots inside the, the tracker and stuff like this. And yeah, so, uh, and that's basically what all the, the actions do. And then the slots which, are, uh, which store the information you uh, pa pass all the ones that can contain information, and you can also customize the features of the of the uh, of the slots, which then are passed to the network. So, for example, if you had a list slot, you could either have have a feature which was one or zero when it when it when there was anything in it or nothing in it, or you could have the length of the slot be be the feature. So it would pass six if there were six elements, or three if there were three elements. But it could be literally anything you want, which is which is uh, yeah, which is very useful in some in some cases. And then your intents and entities come from your uh, NLU model, and uh, so it's something that you then train outside on RAS NLU, hopefully. But it can also connect to any other NLU service that you currently use. And then after defining these, you're ready to go. So that's all I had to say, and I hope that was uh, not too quick a tour around Rasa. And please use it. I would love it if you used it. So, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, we have five minutes for questions. Does anyone have a question? Thanks. Uh, thanks, Joey. That was a great talk. 
Uh, and Rasa is awesome. I'm there with it. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just have a question on Rasa NLU. Mm-hmm. When you're doing the intent classification, why are you averaging the word vectors of the constituent words, um, not running an LSTM and using like the hidden state of the uh-huh. LSTM, or, or maxing instead of averaging al- across the word vector dimensions? Like, have you benchmarked these uh-huh. so, approaches? So, yeah. So uh, that's a it's a really good question. Um, th- uh, part, part of the reason why it would be cool to use an LSTM would be that the order of words would, would matter more and stuff like that. Uh, the reason why we decided not to do that is because uh, as soon as you include an LSTM, you start adding thousands more weights into the model, which then become harder to train. So for a, 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 like, a lot of the developers that, that we want to work with are, small, uh, are like developers who are just starting out with chatbots, and they don't want to include like 100,000 examples of of NLU, which would be required to train a converged NLU, uh, LSTM. So that's why we don't do it for now. Um, maxing, I haven't actually looked at that. Um, my only potential concern there would be um, when you have a word to vec model, uh, the, the origin isn't really anything. So you could, you could just define a new, new origin, and then uh, it, 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 it would be hard to know whether the maxing, I mean, max, the result of maxing would then be different in that case. So, yeah. It, em, empirically, it does seem to work better than averaging sometimes. Oh, really? Okay. So, I mean, I mean that's definitely something that, that we should look at, and I'll mention that on the slide. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any others? Hi, Joey. Great talk. Hey. Thanks. I think the ability uh, for a chatbot to keep the context is very important in order to feel more, more human-like interaction. Uh, I would like to know how many sentences does it have to happen before the, the chatbot loses the context? Uh, so that, that's a hyperparameter that you can include. So you could include the entire old conversation with the user if you'd like. Uh, but it really comes down to how much training data you have. So, so uh, you, you don't want it to be too focused on things that have happened in the past. So if you're just starting out, we suggest maybe three to five messages being your maximum history. But again, if, if you believe that you, can, you have a converged network, you can, put, uh, you can start from the start, essentially, of the, the conversation. So you can have as many messages as you'd, li- as you'd like. Does is, is that answer your question? Or? Uh, yes, more or less. It's because of the, of the size of the LSTM uh-huh. network. So, so is it related? So, uh, right. So, so, so the, L- the LSTM is, uh, is length and specific. So you can, you can run the same LSTM on one message as infinite messages, essentially, obviously, given computing time. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Um, hello. Thank Hi. you for the talk. It was a very nice talk. I have a question about, on the very first slide which you showed, there was about, was the weather in Karlsruhe tomorrow? Uh, I, my question would be, how do you deal with negations? So, right. Because yeah. I have also experience. I was trying to do trying to do chatbot, uh-huh. but it was really I, I yeah. Um, that is the one question I didn't want you to ask. You, you asked me no, but um, yeah, negations are incredibly hard. So unless somebody is explicit, explicit. So there are two, there are. Uh, so, so the reason why negation, negations are so hard is that especially when you're averaging word vectors, you could just have a sentence uh, which was an intent, but then you could have a sentence with not at the end, and because of the way word vectors work and ha- how we're averaging word vectors, it would only very slightly change the word vector. Th- there are two ways you can go about it. You can do sort of like a, a very simple sort of like, if there's a not in here, uh, like, like a, a uh, I guess, sort of like regex sort of thing, like look for specific negation terms which, which work. Um, uh, yeah, so, 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 so that's one, one way of, of doing it. Uh, what, I've, what I've found through, through uh, working with chatbots, though, is that it's, it's very rare for it to really make the difference between two intents. So, so I, I guess, like, like, I can't imagine somebody saying, what's the weather in Karlsruhe not like tomorrow? You know, like, like that, that's... So, so yeah, I, I mean, we're, we're obviously actively looking into solving this problem. Um, but it hasn't seemed to come up that uh, as much as you might think it would. Uh, because of course, like th- that's what people. These kind of questions people will put who want to test how well right, the chatbot exactly, works. Yeah. <laughs> and this is really big problem. Like, what, what's the weather in Karlsruhe? Not tomorrow, but today. Yeah, uh, right, some right, nonsense, yeah, uh-huh. and then you just like. 
Yeah, exactly. And, and that's, that's why it's actually really tough to develop these things because all the people I know in a professional capacity are bot developers. And so I'm like, oh, can you just try this bot out for a bit? And then they just go for these words which they know is going to mess the thing up and they're just like just trying to put it through its paces. But it means that you, know, you don't get sort of like the natural NLU that you'd get through a user. Um, yeah, so, so it's definitely an active research area for us. Negation. Okay, uh, let's uh, give uh, jo Joey another round of applause. Thanks. Also, if anybody wants to talk to me afterwards, I'm around all week, so just come and say hi. <laughs>